It's 4th of July, not long till 500 days, which is half of a thousand. Gonna move this trailer out of this shed, move these two Merlots, and then the combine surface is pretty much finished. So I'm gonna bring that round, put that back in that shed now, because it's sort of open fronted. And I'm gonna try and get the header next to it. Now the header, although is, is longer than the old header that used to fit in there, it's actually wider as well. So it might be tight, but I'll try and get the combine the header out, out of the big shed into this shed because when I'm at Bateman next week, we need to get all the grain stores cleared out because it's given rain. It's a nice inside job for people to do. And also, I won't be there either, so the lads may as well clean it out. Actually, it's not that bad. Cleaning the grain store out, cleaning grain bins out is bad, but we don't have any grain bins anymore and I've just walked past the telly on what I need. I'll go and get the pallet forks, move them bits of timber that Rich has ordered that have been delivered here, move that trailer out of the way, move the jack, move that Merlot, I don't know where to back the header in first or back the combine in first. I might back the, the combine in first and tuck it behind this brick pillar and then back the header where that trailer is, hopefully. Bit of a struggle here to try and get this out. I have to like put it under the chassis of the trailer, drop it down, and then pull. It's catching there now. Put a lock on the other way. This is where the mini merlot comes in because the low load is there. So if I pull that forwards, I can swing onto it, whereas the big merlot wouldn't be able to do that in this space. So while it's still on the tractor, I'll put it onto it. Just swing in this gap now, and then back end will hit the wall, you see, because it's little. Just miss that draw bar, I'll miss that wall. Perfect. Just realised these John Deere's don't have ABS. Or is it an option? Well, this one's not got it. Fast track and the fence come with it on. So we can't plug the ABS plug in. A lot of people think I don't like John Deere's. I do like John Deere's. It's just they have a lot of things missing that you get standard on other tractors and I just feel that the fence, obviously, I mean it goes without reason, the fast track's comfy on the road, the fence far far more comfortable on the road and it can do a lot more for its size as well, the John Deere's are quite big for their horsepower and you just kind of carry on weight that you don't need or like extra steps into the cab which is kind of pointless unless you want to see into grain trailers. No, they are good tractors, and we did used to have them, but I just believe that the fence better for what we're doing, the application, and obviously the fast track is as well, step, certainly, because that does most of the road work. The problem with John Deere's as well is there's too many of them around, so the resale on them is absolutely rubbish because there's just so many out there. I'm going to try and get the header now on a mini Merlot, and then hopefully I can turn it round in here because it's so small, not the head of the, the Merlot, obviously, and then take it round to the shed. Just about managed to turn it round in the shed, which is good. As long as that doesn't catch there too much, it's the bump stops. I think just out of that, and skim that box there. Gonna see how well the header trailer follows. So I'm just gonna go around this bend here now, past this puddle. So I'm just gonna skim the puddle now with the front wheel of the header trailer hopefully and then we'll see where the back wheel follows so the back probably cuts the corner three foot so if you were swinging in the gateway you just got to sort of go three foot wide of the gateway and then the back wheel hopefully should follow Putting that, the Mini Merlot on the front of the header makes it look even bigger, don't you think? I'll just try and stand back and admire it. <laughs> it's ridiculous. 
It's going to take some getting used to these cameras of what's corner of what they're showing. Just take the combine round now, put that in, tuck it behind the pillar, then put the header in, and it's starting to rain. And now my new head is getting wet. Look at the puddle. Oh, look, fuel light on on the Merlot. Anyway, I think it should fit in there pretty easily. Now that there's a supervised back in it. It's so easy to back up with this header trailer. I thought it'd be a bit tricky with it having a steering axle, but it just seems to work. Don't know how, but it just does. It just literally goes where you want it to go, quicker. Just about fits in the shed, I'll pull the combine forwards now. Get the drill in behind it, hopefully, because I know there's a bit of rubbish in the back of the shed. But I think we've got at least a spare bay to put it in. So I'll put the drill in here, do some of that over. Pull the combine forwards now into that gap. Moving the drill now with the front attachment that we made for moving the chip around. So it means it's quite easy and then manoeuvrable. It's obviously on the front where you can see it, so I'm going to shove it now into that gap there. Nice and easy. I can see what I'm doing as well, you see, because I'm on my left hand side pushing it in with the cab being on the left. Just pivot on the front. Just like back in a trailer, but with better vision. Apparently, it should fit with a yard to spare. That's a meter in new money. We'd have strided it out. So, keep going like that, and then that should do. It's in the shed there. There we go. Drop it down now. Perfect. This fits in here nicely. The header there and the combine there. Then I've got a baler shaped gap here. So I think I might take the combine back out, back the baler in, and then put the combine back in, or spin the drill round, put the drill here, and then the baler where that is, because the drill won't go out as much. Took the combine out of the shed, back the drill in behind the combine. I'm gonna put the baler in now, see how far backwards I can put the drill, and then put the combine back in. And then hopefully we've got all the, all the big things that we in the way out of this grain store, so then we can clean up. It's a bit tight. You see in the mirrors how close it is. I just took the baler off, locked the tractor up, and as I just put this down, and as I got out of the tractor, I locked the door, and I kind of dropped the keys, and as I went to grab them, I managed to knock them over this shelf, and they've dropped inside there. And I've had my phone in and the camera, and I can't, I think I can just see the corner of the key ring. So now I've got my remote camera and a grabber and a magnet and I'm going to try and fish them out. But I've been messing for 20 minutes thinking they'd fell out the bottom trying to reach up, but I just can't feel them anywhere. Just... Right, that is the key ring. And it's right in. You can't even see where the camera is. So I'm going to try and fish it out now with this nifty device. Gonna need three hands. Finally, got them. I had to tape the camera to a grabber. There's the screen. And fish them out from right down there. So don't try that at home, because you'll get really frustrated and you might swear. Everything's now nicely tucked up in this shed. The baler in here, the combine, and even the drill. And then a walkway as well to the workshop. So it all just fits quite nice. Very close over here though. But next time I put the combine in, I'll get it over a little bit further. That's, that's Tom Pemberton close. I like to call this shed the motivational shed. It's why I get up in the morning because all this stuff has to be paid for. So when the spray comes with part of that and the other end of it, it's probably a million quid's worth then in the shed.
Yeah, so all that will give me a reason to get up every morning for the next five or six years, so it's paid for. Quick update on the sunflowers that got a bit burnt by the chemical, but sorry, the fertilizer. They haven't died completely and they do still seem to be growing. So we're kind of getting some new leaves at the top that aren't damaged. So these are obviously damaged with the spray the other day, but then these are new ones that have appeared since. So hopefully they're going to recover. They're now officially waist tight in places. So still got a bit of growing to do. I think they're probably three weeks behind where they were last year. So we're looking at August before we can open the maze, probably the middle of it as well, which is a shame. I didn't come this far up the field the other day to look at the maize, well, the sweet corn, see how that is. But that's got a little bit checked as well by the, by the fertiliser. And I brought the ruler here, so that's about, I don't know, just over 60 centimetres tall now. So we'll see what it looks like in a few days. But we've got some rain now, and then it's really warm. It's like 22 degrees despite raining. So hopefully that'll boot on a bit and get hold of that fertiliser as well. And it'll give it more of a benefit than what it's knocked it by taking the green out of the leaves. Potatoes have really grown now, so I'm going to pull a root up to show you what they look like, if I can. Nope, I'll have to use two hands, hold on. They're not very big, but they're uh, definitely a size that you can eat, so just boil them, bit of butter, perfect. And hopefully the rest will be ready, and that'll coincide with when the sunflowers are ready as well. So if people come to the sunflower maze, they can also have a go at digging their own potatoes. Just walked into the opposite end of the sunflower field, got my lemkin ruler out, and if you look... This one is about 1.6 metres tall. Sorry, 1.06 metres tall. So we'll see what that looks like in four or five days. See how it's growing. Car packed, hair cut. Everything tucked up in the shed. Devon bound now. On the way to Devon, I'm not driving. Charlotte is. Well, I was driving. You just took over so I can edit the video. So you've just watched this. So what you've just watched, I've just edited as well. We'll be driving. Anyway. Apparently it's raining all week down here, but hopefully Bateman's undercover. So that's it for today. I think there's an outro from my niece. You can watch another video there and you can subscribe over here. I'll see you tomorrow and you can see some exciting stuff at the Bateman factory, hopefully.